chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted the Lord is gracious, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priest who to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word, to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 to 32 Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may import grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. First week. What are the first week we meditated? Why, why God's children to share the gospel of Christ? What are the five reasons we saw? Number one, it is the great commission. It's a God's commission. Number two, every Christian, it's a duty. Believers duty, not Christians. I would say every believers, their duty to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, the third one, about the condition of the people. People, those who are not accepted Christ, they are in debt. They are dead and uh, we saw they are influenced by evil spirit. So they are walking with the evil spirit. And the third one, uh, and they are subject to the wrath of God. So we saw that. And so the condition of the people uh, make us to move forward to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as I said, the children of God, we must share with love because of their condition the fourth one we saw the love of god the creator god how he loved each people every individual he loved us you know the love brought god in this year to die for us that is amazing so we should share the love of jesus christ and the fifth one we saw the joy of salvation. If we really accept Christ, you know, we can't hold the joy, the joy which give the salvation. So we can't hold. So we should share the gospel with love and compassion. With love and compassion. So I encourage everybody, you know, please pray for your friends. The prayer is the first one you and me to uh, do. If we start with prayer, then God will lead the second. So before today's meditation, so let's close our eyes, we'll pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords,
Father, as your children, we come thy presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, speak to us, Lord. Lord, speak to us. Lord, open our heart. Open our mind, Lord. Lord, help us to understand the scripture. Lord, speak to us. Lord, we submit each one of us in your hand. Be with us and bless us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, last week we saw why God's children want to uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So today for meditation, I took the word from 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I request somebody please read for the word from 1 Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, God called you and me from where to where? So God called you and me from dark to light. So, you know, when, uh, when you read Ephesians chapter 2, Paul writes, before we accept Christ, where we are? We are in the darkness. So God called you and me from the darkness to the Light, the marvelous light, Bible says. It is a marvelous light. You know, two destiny. A is the darkness and the B is the marvelous light. Marvelous light. So only the two, you know, we can go either the, the along with evil or we can go along with the almighty God. The darkness and the marvelous light. So before we accepted Christ, though we born in Christian family, we are not accepted Christ Jesus. But one day, when we cry out to God, you know, I cry out to God, I, uh, around my 24th year, I cry out to God, in my laboratory, in Merlas University, I cry out to God, not in church, not in home. In my lab, I cry out to God. I cry out to God. Lord, I am in darkness. I need, I want to come out of the darkness. Come out of the darkness to your marvelous light. I call God. I cry out to God. So God pulled me out from the darkness to the marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the gift. That is the salvation. This is purely grace and mercy. Nobody can yet, nobody can do anything. It is purely grace. Grace. By grace, in the faith of Lord Jesus Christ, we are saved. We are saved. God took out, he pulled out from the darkness and he placed us in the marvelous light. You know, if you read the Bible, and the word said, why he uh, took out from darkness to his marvelous light? Why? Who called you? Where? From the darkness to the marvelous light. Why? To proclaim the praises of God. That is only, you know, though there are several, uh, you know, reasons. God brought you and me from the darkness to the light. But the nutshell, when Peter, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he writes, God called you and me to proclaim the praises of him. The praises of him. The praises of him. How to fulfill God's call? So we, the word said, God called you and me for what? A chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, 
his own special people and he called you and me from darkness to the light so now how to fulfill god's call you know generally when uh, when uh, I, i used to meet people they used to say you know i am asking god why god brought this nation or they will say why god called me you know generally people uh, people used to say i am praying brother i am praying oh, god, oh, uh, lord why you called me why you delivered me you know people will ask and ask to god you know the bible is clearly it said it is why god called it is we saw that and now we are today we are going to meditate how to fulfill god's purpose god call his people god call you and me so how we are going to fulfill the call of god if you read uh, first peter chapter 1 could you kindly read first peter 2 1 therefore therefore lay aside all malice uh, deceit hypocrisy hypocrisy envy and all evil speaking and all evil speaking so god said how we want to fulfill god's call number 1 god children to lay aside we want to lay everything what are the things bible clearly say malice you know we uh, and uh, uh, hypocrisy envy and all evil speaking all evil speaking so if you somebody have tamil bible you can read what is it first peter 2 1 இப்படி இருக்க கர்த்தர் தயவுள்ளவர்களே நீங்கள் ருசி பார்த்ததுண்டானால் சகல துர்குணத்தையும் சகல துர்குணம் துர்குணம் இது you know to whom god uh, peter write this to whom he is writing this letter to the church believers believers so peter is the spirit of god asked peter to write the letter to the believers but here he writes you know to one, uh, to one it said durkuna we we have we have malice inside like evil character is inside durkuna what is the second one sagala vida kabadtayam kabad you know uh, you know we used to when we see people when we see people what we say you know we, oh i am thinking of you i am always uh, thinking of you i love you uh, we we used to say several things you know when we go away from them you know we will say bad thing about them bad thing about them that is the covered that is the covered illiya so we are you know uh, this is whom we are uh, you know ivella yaarukulla irukirathu believers ku irukirathu believers ku irukirathu you know all these are in the believers on uh, the uh, please sanju வஞ்சகங்களையும் வஞ்சகமான காரியங்கள் you know we are deceiving people deceiving you know how much we are de- is deceive others deceive others through our word through our attitude how we are deceiving ah poramaigalayum poramai poramai sagala vida porangurudu envy olithuvittu envy you know we have porama in our life irukirad porama ellame nama church ku povu we'll go to the same church we'll we'll eat together but in within our heart we have edu porama envy nama pulla irukirad illaya then sagala vida porangurudalayum olithu vittu porangurudal evil speaking evil speaking you know you know one of the main uh, problem in the church today 
One of the main problem in the Christians today is the evil speaking about somebody. Somebody. We will go and talk with somebody. We will go and meet with somebody. And we will talk to somebody. We will talk about pastor. We will talk about you know somebody in our prayer group or somebody in our church. We will talk and talk about bad things. Bible says it is evil speaking. Evil speaking. When Peter, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, God made Peter to write. Peter, write this to the church. Let them come out from all evil speaking. Evil speaking. So today, you know, though we are calling ourselves, we are believers, let's examine whether all these evil things are having in our heart. Why we are not able to reach out? Why we are not able to reach out? Why we, we don't have the power of God? You know, Bible said, the gospel itself, the power. God has the word itself has the power. We are preaching. We are preaching. But why? The power is not revealed to people. Because all the evil things are happening. We are having. If somebody have this character in their heart. You know I can be a good preacher. Good preacher. I can do all. I can do good worship. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. That's why it's happening. Why Christianity is degenerating today. In America. Because of the evil. Because of this evil. 3,000 churches are closing in this nation every year. Every year. You know, last week I said, in coming, you know, with our own eyes we saw the church was converted into a temple, Hindu temple. I saw a church was converted into a mall in Decatur. Not somewhere. In our own place. Why? The preaching, a lot of preachers are there. People are preaching. Lord of good worshippers are there in Atlanta. Why? Because of this evil character. We are evil character. So we have evil speaking. Evil speaking. We are speaking about others. We are speaking about others. We are going Especially all the Christian, those who are calling believers. But God said, you should lay aside. You should come out. Come out of all these things. The second thing, Ephesians 5, 5, 18. Bible said, sorry. Uh, first Peter 2, 3, please. Mm. Yeah. In the English verse, it is verse 2. Discern the pure milk of the word. Number 1, lay aside all this evil character. Evil character. And number 2, we should discern, discern the pure milk of the word. We should discern. You know, we uh, we used to say, you know, we have a, we are several generation. We are Christians. We born in a Christian family. We are saying everything, or we discern the word of God, or we discern. If you and me discern the word of God, we will read our desire. We want to desire to be with somebody. We, we want to desire to go and be part of in several parties. We have that kind of desire. But Bible says, a believer has the desire to change. We will look in detail. 
desire to be with God, to be in God's presence, to be in God's presence. Number three, Ephesians 5, 18, it said, be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number four, Ephesians 6, 18, pray always, pray always. <laughs> So this is the call God called you and me. God called you and me from darkness to the light to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the praises of Him. But to fulfill the desire, you and me, God is expecting several characters, the four, you and me, laying aside all the evil character. Number two, desire to be in God's presence. Number three, filled with the Holy Spirit. Number four, a prayer warrior. Let's uh, look in little detail. Why God children have to lay aside all evil character? You know, today we can hear a lot of doctrine. Lot of doctrine. People used to say, if you say one, if you say one time, one time, if you, it means, if you come to God with a broken hearted, Lord, I need you, I need you. I am in the darkness. You take out from the darkness to the light. Then we cry out to God, According to this verse, what God does? He take you and me from the darkness to the light. Light. So we are saved by the grace of God. His mercy of God. Then, if somebody allowed the evil, so people, generally people used to preach, you know, one time, if you say one time, it is okay, you will go to heaven. You don't need to worry about anything. But according to the verse, you know, several verses I, I can quote from scripture, but for today meditation, I took Ephesians chapter 4, 25. Could you kindly read this verse? Therefore, Therefore putting away uh, lying, uh, lying. Lying. You know, you know, generally Christians, we, we used to Lie, you know, it's a very simple, you know, just like that we, we say lies, just like that, you know, it, it is in, it's a, uh, but um, it is in our nature, in nature, several people, even big, big preachers, they used to uh, say lies, sometimes we, when the pressure comes, we say lies, but Bible says, putting away, Lying. Let each one of you speak mm. with his neighbor, mm. for we are members of one another. One another. Uh. Be angry and <laughs> do not sin. Be angry. You know, this it means you can be angry with your child. You know, we can sometimes if somebody is doing wrong, you can be angry with them and make them to repent. You know, this this angry, you know, you know, Jesus is uh, in, in the gospel he said if you say uh, to your brother as a wicked man you know sometimes when we we have anger if you allow the anger to our brother so it means what it means you are then the fiery hell but here that word say, if we have, if somebody is doing wrong, so when we are angry with him, and also Bible say, and do not sin, and do not sin. So angry always lead sin. Angry. You know how many times you know we are angry with our spouses. We generally, you know, uh, we will read Bible when we pray. And all of a sudden, we be angry with our spouses. 
we the uh, the uh, the anger will come out from our heart so it means please uh, read uh, do not let the sun go down on mm, wrath mm. nor give place to the evil so if you keep the anger you know bible said you know uh, when uh, you know after our uh, marriage you know probably around 20 years 19 years back so during that time i used to go for preaching you know when we married we used to have some a different kind of opinion but whenever i when i when i go down and kneel down for prayer immediately the spirit of god would remind me go get up and go ask your wife and ask her to forgive and i felt several times you don't need to preach go you know probably next time next day i might go and preach in some big church in chennai but when some misunderstanding some anger come when we go down and kneel the spirit of god would remind you remind you and me reminded me go and reconcile with your spouse you know this is the initial step are we still we are we are going the same line you know initial stage you know we have might different kind of opinion would come now it's grown up we are grown up are we still struggling in anger still are struggling anger so if we hold the anger the anger always leads unforgiveness unforgiveness maybe anger with your spouse anger with your relatives anger with your you know colleagues if you hold the anger it leads it leads sin unforgiveness unforgiveness so paul is writing don't do not sin so we, when we hold anger or unforgiveness bible said you those who are holding anger allowing allowing read for me what is that allowing huh? allowing sin place to devil place to devil we can worship i we can preach we can we can put the you know good uh, good stuff to the world to our relatives to our friends but bible say you allowed evil you allowed evil so why god should have to lay aside all evil character you know evil will come to visit you and me through the evil character through the evil character so if we have evil evil character in our heart you cannot see the move of the holy spirit you cannot see the move of holy spirit so the number one we we are giving place to devil number 2 when we allow the evil character evil character we are grieving the holy spirit we are grieving the holy spirit bible say ephesians 4:13 do not grieve the holy spirit holy spirit of god if we if we have sin if i have sin in my life the spirit of god will grieve you i am grieving the holy spirit so the spirit of god cannot move i can be a good preacher i can preach good sermon people might appreciate but you cannot see the move of the holy spirit you cannot see the move of the holy spirit so grieve the holy spirit we should not have hold sin in our life 
or we should lay all the evil character number 3 if we have the evil character we are spiritually sleep in the among the dead you know god called you and me he take out from the darkness to the light uh, you know i i i searched some images to put to explain little no i couldn't find so god call we are we were there now god call here god here we are in the marvelous light so when we allowed the evil character evil speaking so bible say we we came back we are sleeping among the dead you know not we are not dead we are sleeping we are sleeping where we came out here came out b to a so we are sleeping among the dead people sleeping that's why paul said oh therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the dead and christ will give you light come out if i have a sin in my life if i share the gospel of jesus christ to somebody it won't give anything nothing nothing you know our personal life is very important if we don't have a holy life you know we can be preach nothing will happen nothing will happen but god's expectation god children to be holy to be holy god said i am holy you also be holy non parshutha நீங்களும் அப்படி இருக்கணும் பரிசுத்தமா இருக்க வேண்டும் பரிசுத்தமா இருக்க வேண்டும் பீப்பிள் so for that reason the spirit of god said you should lay aside all the evil character evil character so when you and me when we want to share the gospel of jesus christ we should be holy we should be holy we should walk with god god to dwell in our heart the spirit of god cannot dwell in unholy place in unholy place you know in joshua you know it's amazing chapter i think joshua chapter 6 joshua about to go and battle again the the city of ai you know god promised joshua you know, you know you, in your lifetime nobody can ever stand before you உனக்கு முன்பதாக ஒருவரும் எதிர்த்து நிற்பதில்லை brought destruction for the army of Joshua why because god was not there in their camp if disobedience come if he will come god cannot work with sin work with sin you know today why gospel of lord jesus christ is not able to reach out in this nation because sins in their personal life in the personal life you know it is a very sorry to say this recently i heard you know one of the biggest church in chicago biggest church in chicago 
people used to, one of my friends, he used to go to the church. He used to say to me, Oh, wonderful worship in our church. Wonderful preaching. He always appreciate about his church. Recently the same person told me, you know my pastor, some illegal contact with somebody. So he quit the church. It's the biggest church in that particular city. God cannot move with sin. The spirit of God is holy God. Holy God. So when you and me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, we should be filled with the love of Jesus Christ. We should be holy. We should be holy. So for discipleship, holiness is the main criteria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spiritually and physically and mentally. God children never argue to anybody. Never speaking evil thing about anybody. Anybody. You know, this is the, when we meditate in the word of God, we can find it out. So, number two, desire. Number one, we saw laying aside. Number two, to be desire God's presence. A believer, how we can easily identify a believer? You know, people used to say, Christians used to say, you know, I'm a believer of God. I do this, I do all the activity. Yeah, we can, everybody can do. Everybody can do. If a true believer, if somebody accepted Christ Jesus, the desire of him or her to be always with God. Always with God. It is easy identification. You know, 1 Peter 2, 2 said, if newborn babies desire the pure milk of the world. So you and me, when we accepted Christ, we should desire to read the word of God. To read the word of God. You know, when we read and read and meditate, we don't know how long we are, we are spending. It is a love. You know, it is, it is a give insight. And Psalm 42, 1 say, As the deer pant for the water brook, my soul longeth you. So you and me to long the presence of God. So we should long to be, read the word of God, and to be in the presence of God, to be in the presence of God. You know, this is amazing word. We are going to read Psalm, Song of Solomon 2, 3. If you have Bible, you know, please uh, move the scripture, uh, move to the scripture. 2, 1 said, could you read? Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods. Here, you know, the uh, uh, Sulemite, you know, she is uh, saying to King Solomon, you know, the bridegroom and bride, you know, the conversation. So the uh, bride, bride, she is saying to the bridegroom, you are like a, like an apple tree among the trees of the wood. So is my beloved among the sons. Beloved among the sons, I sat down in his shadow with great delight. So you are like apple tree, you are like tree. So the, the Sulamite, she is saying to her husband, you are like a tree. So but I want to desire to be with your shadow. With your shadow. So she want to be in his, in, in her husband, near his husband. So when you and me accepted Christ, so God purchased you. God washed you. God 
they have made an eternal covenant with you and me. Eternal covenant. They have made an eternal covenant with you and me. They have made an eternal covenant with you. Nithya Udan Badike. Thandudai Ratta Thinam. He made the eternal covenant through his blood. His blood. So when we made a covenant, the marriage covenant with God, so our desire to be always with God. With God. That is the first desire. To read the word of God. The same, you know, if you read uh, this next, she said, and his fruit was so the fruit was sweet to my taste so she is sitting she is sitting in the in the shadow of the tree and she is eating the food eating the fruit so she is meditating the word of god she is meditating you know we always read the word of god Read the word of God. But Bible said in Psalm 1, you should meditate. You should meditate. You know, meditation to eat the fruit. Reading is a good, you know, we should read. You know, before we meditate a uh, you know, book, for example, if you take the book of First Peter, before you meditate, you before you meditate the word, we should go through a quick, you know, reading. We should finish the book. You know, that's why I used to read. Before I take any word from the, for message, I used to read the whole, you know, passage. Not only the, you know, the chapter. I read the whole book. Then we should come back and asking God and reading the word and meditating God. Asking God to reveal the hidden things. So we used to read a quick, you know, reading, go through the whole book. And we should come back and meditate. And read the scripture again and again and again. You know, that's why, you know, she, she said, I'm eating. And his fruit was Sweet to my taste. She is eating the fruit and she is enjoying. Enjoying. Do you ever enjoy the read of God, uh, word of God, when you read the word of God? You know, before I accept Christ, before I accept Christ, you know, when I read the word, it's like a medicine. My parents force me to read. It's kind of medicine. Always... Uh, okay, I, I, you know, within few minutes I will read the, uh, read the chapter and I will say to my mommy, I am done, I want the food. But now, now, you know, I read the scripture, read the book, but I meditate, I meditate. I don't know how long, you know, sometimes I wonder, oh, this much time, it's already passed by. When you really meditate, when you delight in God, when you love the Lord, love the Lord, you love to read the word. Love to read the word. You know, you can enjoy every word. You know, you can read. You can, you can, you know, your soul will be joy, enjoy. It, it, you will feel the happiness within yourself reading reading and meditating the word of god the joy of the joy the unspeakable joy will come out come out each time when you read, meditate on the word of god you will have a you know revelation from god revelation so that's why she is saying you know in his fruit was sweet to my taste. She is eating. Not eating the apple. The word of God. You know the, the cow. When it go out for. Um, to eat the grass. It eat the grass very fast. Very fast. And then. The cow came back. And sit in a shadow place. And she. Take all the food and she chew it. You know, chew it. 
show it. You know, the word which we, you know, whenever you read the word of God, chew the word of God, meditate. When you walk, think about the word of God. Think about the word of God. You know, it is amazing. Amazing. You know, I, I always read the word of God, be, you know, read and pray before I go to work. When I drive the car, I meditate, you know, when I am driving the car. I think about the word which I read. You know, when I meditate, when, when I chew the word of God, you know, I get several, you know, insight. You know, several times, I, I, all the messages, I, uh, you know, the, the revelation I get, some driving or, you know, when I, when I thinking and meditate and bringing back the word in my heart and asking God about the word. It is amazing. It is amazing. You can chew and taste the word of God. Taste the word of God. You can delight in his word. That's why Bible says, when you delight in your word, you can see the light of God. The word will show the light. The light. So be desiring God's presence. Number, you know, number three, she said, is amazing. He, he brought me the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. I love this word. I love this word. You know, the, the bride, bridegroom is taking her bride to the banquet hall for dinner. But she said, you know, I went to that banquet hall, but I am thinking about the love of my, love of my, um, Manavala. Uh, Manavala Nudia, Nesa Kodi, bride, groom. The bride is thinking about the love of the bride. Love of the bride, bride, Nana. Bridegroom. Bridegroom. You know, when you walk, you should think about the love of God in your heart. When you always fill with the love of God, when you share the word, it has the power. It has the power. When you, when you meditate, you should fill with the love of God. When you share to share about Jesus to somebody, you should think about the love of God. He showed on the cross of Calvary. When you think about His love, when you share, the word has the power. The word has the power. That's why she said, you know, I, want, I went for dinner, but I was filled with the love. The love. The love. Number three, number four, she said, number five was, sustain me with cakes and raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am love sick. Love sick. Love sick. So, you and me, you know, when we are love sick, we should always desire to be in the presence of God. Presence of God. You know, that is the expectation of God. You and me to love sick in God. You know, today all preachers are love sick in worldly things. Worldly things. They are thinking uh, where to buy land, how can I build my church or build a home or I can buy for a property. You know, they are thinking. But the God is saying, think about my love. Think about my love. You know, a lot of preachers today, they lost their passion. Lost their passion. Why? Because, you know, God called you and me to love sick upon Him. But we shift our love. We started to love the world. 
the today church started to love the world to embrace the world instead of loving god we are saying we are loving god but our focus is shift but here she said i am lousy and she said his left hand is under my head and his right hand he embraced me he took her and hugged her she got, uh, he closed with him you know the expectation of god you and me to come closer to god closer to god we should come closer to god closer if god if you and me come closer to god god will share his burden god will share his burden to you and me about the dying soul you know abraham was closer to god god share his heart to abraham abraham i'm going to destroy sodom and gomorrah so abraham was close to god close to god then he prayed then he prayed you know you and me to come closer to god closer to god desire to desire god's presence to desire god's presence number 3 to be filled with the holy spirit to be filled with the holy spirit amen so the desire of god you and me to be filled with the holy spirit you know if you read ephesians chapter 1 13 it said when we accepted god when we accepted christ jesus bible said the spirit of god sealed you sealed you so the spirit of god put a seal mark upon you and me the spirit of god put a seal mark and said he is belonging to lord jesus christ he was saved from god he was saved from the wrath of god washed by the precious blood of jesus christ so the spirit of god put a mark that is the mark it is a big you know i don't want to argue you know you know the you know it is kind of you know the mainline churches when they say when we accept christ you know bible say he put a mark the spirit of god put a mark see so most of them they believe you know that time we fill with the spirit of god you know if you read the scripture it is not true you know if i buy a house if i buy a house you know i the the that's a seal this is my house but i want to fill that house fill that house but if you read in luke chapter 7 13 jesus said you should ask you should ask you and me a believer to ask god believer to ask god to fill with the holy spirit that's why jesus said you know if you read ephesian the whole chapter i encourage you you know to read the chapter of ephesian ephesian chapter 1 you know paul when he writes to the church of ephesian in the 13th he said when you accepted christ the spirit of god put a seal upon you but you read the next word could you kindly read the next verse 14 on verse first of all what is so here you know first up to 13 he said to accept christ if you accepted god put a seal mark the spirit of god put a seal then he is writing uh, uh, and love unto all his things uh, ceases not to be not to be thanks for you and mm. the mention of you in my prayers uh, 
So he said, I am praying. I am praying for what? That's why he is saying. Uh, the he said, you know, you accepted. The Spirit of God put a seal mark. Now I am praying for you. Why he is praying? To receive the gift of revelation. Well, here, please read. Uh, spirit of wisdom. And spirit, spirit of wisdom. Revelation. revelation in, the knowledge of him. in the knowledge of him. So, you know, if you read in, you know, the uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. One of the, the first gift, the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of wisdom. So Paul, he, he does not write all the nine gifts, but he is giving a glimpse. He is giving a glimpse. Now you accepted. Now you accepted Christ. The Spirit of God put a seal mark upon you. Now I am praying for you. So it means you also pray. I am praying for you. So it means Paul is saying, you know, Americans used to, you know, he, they used to say, they say all the word and the end of this, you know, if I were in you, I will do this. They used to say, right, right? So what we will do immediately? So we will say, yes, we will do that. We will say, you know, this is the, you know, instead of asking you to do this, they used to say, if I am where in you, I will do this. So here Paul says, I am praying for you. For what? You want to receive the gift of knowledge. Gift of knowledge. You want to receive the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So Paul is saying, you also pray to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, in Luke 7, 13, 7, 13, you should ask God. Ask God. So we should ask God to fill. You know, in Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter, I think, 4, four you know, when they, they threatened Peter and John, they came out and they were together and they prayed that they filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The sealing is different and filling of the Holy Spirit is different. We should be filled with the Holy Spirit. When we fill with the Holy Spirit, the gifts will operate. The gifts will operate. You know, that's why the, 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 when people pray, they will say about <coughs> the things going to happen. How they are saying? Because the gifts of the Holy Spirit gifts of the Holy Spirit. So God is asking you to be filled with love, His Spirit. You know, we should be filled with the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God will bring the love of God. Only the Holy Spirit will bring the love of God. So you and me be filled with the Holy Spirit. We will be filled with God's love. God's love, the unconditional love. So we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And John said, so we should, dis, uh, John 7, 13, 37, Jesus said, you should thirst, you know, longing, longing, longing. You know, you and me to long, oh Lord, I need your filling. I need the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We should ask God. You know, God will give the revelation. Will give revelation. When the nine gifts will work in our life. The nine gifts God give for the church. To reach our people. To reach our people. You know, if, if the miracles happen, people will come and Accept Christ Jesus. Miracles happen. If, we re if the hidden things was revealed, people will accept Christ Jesus. Jesus. 
So you and me to long for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, when we share the gospel to somebody, when God reveals about themselves to us, about their future, it is easy for them to, to preach the gospel. I saw several people, several people, when, when, we, when we talk about their future, when God reveals about their future, probably they might be very strong Hindu. They will immediately listen the gospel. They will come with fear, tremble, tremble. Why? The filling of the Holy Spirit. The filling of the Holy Spirit. So number four, to be a prayer warrior. To be a prayer warrior. Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. In the Spirit. So before we preach the Word of God, before we share Jesus Christ to somebody, we should pray for that soul. We should pray for the soul. You know, till now, you know, I, I always, sh before I share the word of God, I spend several hours in prayer and fasting and prayer. And very, you know, you know, I always to share the word with fasting and prayer. That is the power. Why? Because Jesus said, if you fast, God will destroy all the breakthrough. Breakthrough. You know, we should pray. We should pour our heart. Why it is today is not much revival in the church? Pastors, they hardly pray. Hardly pray. It is very sad to say that. It is very sad to say that. You know, one of the preachers in, in India, he used to say, if you want to preach one hour, you should minimum preach, uh, sorry, minimum you should pray four hours. Four hours. So before we share to somebody about Jesus, we should fast, and pray to somebody. Fast and pray for somebody. So you know we. I ask you to write the names. You know I urge you. Take one, one day. Or skip a meal. And pray for the five people. Pray for the five people. You know if you. Fast and pray for that five people. People, God will open the door. God will open the door. He knows what to do. You know, we can talk about Jesus several minutes, but one word is enough to reach out to one, somebody. One word of you. One word of you. You know, one of our friend JK, he used to say, you know, I myself, I forgot what I spoke to him. He used to say, one day you said this. One day you said this. I don't know what I said. But he told me, you said that. Then I thought to think about the word. Think about the question. Then I seek the God. I don't know what, what I said. But the Spirit of God moved. No. We allow God. One word is enough. A spiritual man, a prayer warrior man, one word. You know, David has one, one stone to destroy Goliath. Small stone. Imagine. Imagine. You know, how he got the revelation. I always wonder. How 
he got the revelation to shoot exactly the, the, the point. How David got the revelation? How? Only the Spirit of God. Only the anointing. When he was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God opened the spiritual eyes of David. And God told, God might told David, David, this is the gap you should store exactly in this place. Exactly in this place. He did exactly with the power of the Holy Spirit. He did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a prayer warrior and a spirit-filled man and spirit-filled man a man to desire to desire number one to hate all evil evil so that is the expectation of God so you and me to do the will of God to preach and bring people to repentance not activity Never, you know, today church, they are doing wrong thing. They are doing all activity. Activity never bring anybody to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is very clear. It is very clear in the scripture. Only this four option. Hate evil. Hate evil. Desire to understand the heart of God. If a man of God understands the heart of God, God will move with him. God will move with him. A man was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God will reveal the hidden things about somebody. A prayerful man, God always his prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A prayerful man pray for somebody. God will do always miracle. Hallelujah. That is the scripture. A prayerful man. A spiritual man. A miracle is God. A miracle is God. I will finish my sermon with a testimony. Yesterday, I talked to one of Jasker colleagues. He is a Brahmin. He is a Brahmin. He is a Telugu Brahmin. He told me, I asked him, Jaskar already told about his testimony. I talking to him and asking about him. He said, you know, several in 1960, 1960, in Belu, imagine, you know, 1960, in those days, Velur might have a small hospital. Small hospital. You know, in those days, you know, if, if somebody male, if female to be, um, if some female to be, uh, treat, give treatment to a female, only a female doctor to give treatment. That is in those days. So, that time, he's, uh, uh, his um, grandmother his grandmother was sick she she got a tumor in her in her uh, tummy so she was admitted though they are Hindu people they put her in the Christian mission hospital so she was very sick she was very sick about to die the Christian mission hospital some prayer group people they came and they shared the gospel of Jesus Christ and prayed for her. God, they poured, probably they poured their heart to God. God touched this lady and healed her. And they prayed and they left. The night came. All the night, all, you know, the night, they closed, they shut all the night. When she was sleeping, Immediately, a man he man he entered in her in in her room. The man put the light. 
So she, she couldn't wake because of the pain. But she know somebody came in her room. She, uh, the, the man who entered her room, she came to her. She put her hand upon her. And she asked about her, how are you doing? And she, you know, she, he put her hand and put a tadavi she, he, he, he put a, you know, what did it say? Um, she, no, no, she embraced her and she, and he did something in her tummy. She, she don't know what he did. Probably he touched in her tummy and he left, he left. Yes, the next day morning, she waked up, she was completely healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, everybody, they, they, all the ayahs, you know, all the nurses, they came to her and they, they asked her, what happened to you? She said, a man came in the, in the midnight. He put a light and he touched me. I was killed. I was killed. They said, you know, this is the hospital room. No man can enter in the in the in that area. Because this is a women ward. No man can enter. No man can Uru Manshano Ulavarakuda. Nobody, no gents can enter in the female ward. But they understand, she understand, that is Jesus. That is Jesus. Yeah, prayer warriors, they pray poor to God for healing. And God came and he touched, healed and she accepted Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes and pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, Thank you for this day. Thank you for Lord. Lord, we need you. Help us to desire to be in your holy presence. To be in your holy presence. Holy Father, help us Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, pour out the spirit of prayer and intercession in our heart and mind. We don't know how to pray. Holy God, Holy Spirit God, help us to pray. Help us to pray. Father, help us to lead a holy life. The life to please the Almighty God. Help us to lead a holy life. Father, we submit us in your hand. Use us, Lord. We want to reach out the neighbors, we want to reach out to our colleagues, Father, with the power of gospel, with you, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Use us and, my, and, 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 and lead us, Lord. Father, we pray for all our dear brothers and sisters. Lord, lay your hand upon them and bless them and protect them from all evils, Father. Lord, whatever the desire they are having in their heart, Father, fulfill all their desire. Father, meet all their needs, Lord. Meet all their needs. Father, we pray for our children. Lord, bless all the children, Father. Bless them. Lord, heal them. Take away all the sickness from the children, from all our dear brothers and sisters. Lord, bless them. Be with us, Lord. Be with us. Fill us with your peace. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your grace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul.